Welcome back, guys, to the Pest and Lawn Ginger, and this is the update to our power rake. All right, guys, two weeks ago, we did this power rake at this lawn, and you could see dramatically different. But let's take a closer look. Man, it's hard to believe that this is the same <laughs> lawn. I mean, look at it. It's actually growing. Uh, we've got grass in the yard, and that nasty, dingy brown is gone. Now, a lot of this, the fertilizer is pushing. Uh, we wanted to get on top of the lawn so you guys can see. We've got a couple of issues and a couple of concerns. Um, number one, there just isn't a lot of grass uh, like I thought was going to happen. And this is pretty typical to happen on lawns where you dethatch it and that m improper mulch has been suffocating it and acting like a weed barrier. We've got a couple of choices and decisions that we can make, but a couple of things I wanted to show you is we've got rye grass here. Uh, we've got patches of goose grass coming through and we've got about 30% bluegrass. Now the biggest uh, concern here is where do we start? You know, we've got a lot of gaps in the soil. We know mother nature doesn't like to be naked, so one way or another, she's either gonna fill herself with grass or fill herself with weeds to fill in the gap. Now, preferably, we'd much rather have a nice, thick, healthy lawn. So I think the best plan of action that we can is to find a nice, healthy bluegrass. Go ahead and overseed it. So let's talk about that process a little bit. The best way to do that is to get seed to soil contact. So we wanna use what's called a slit slice seeder. But um, they're expensive, they're hard to handle. It took me so long when I was using that slit slice seeder last time, I don't wanna go that route. So let's see what I got in the goodie bag here. Bum, ba -da -bum, ba -ba -bum. What is that? Is that a Sunjo Scarifier and D Thatcher? How did that get there? Here we are, the Sunjo. I mean, Sunjo. Who is this guy, Joe, that's in the sun? But, uh, probably got cancer. Very similar to the Greenworks in the fact that it's got the same drum with the same tines, these spring loaded tines. Now it came pre-installed with the Scarifier, which is basically a slit slice seeder and it's got a hopper on it. Now the control modules, very similar. I don't know if mine just came partially broken, but this thing is like extremely chintzy. It just, it's almost like an arcade <laughs> little controller. You turn it on by pushing the button and pulling down. But all in all, we'll see. Now I got one big issue with the Sun Joe, right? Like who in the crap thought it was a good idea to have like a two gallon bag? Like this thing is so tiny you do like three feet in your pass with the power power rake or a D thatch, and this thing's full. Like, like it's just retarded. That's going in the trash. It's alive. It works. So we're good. So we're gonna use a scarifier to um, slit slice, and so we can overseed and get good seed to soil contact. Now we're gonna be using bluegrass. So I don't want to go more than about a quarter of an inch in depth. So we're gonna have to test pass a couple different times. Now. Keep in mind, this is 125 bucks off of Amazon. We'll see if it's worth it. I don't know how well it's gonna perform. I always get skeptical with these little things because they don't weigh much. Now, I was super surprised with the Greenworks D-Thatcher. I'm hoping that I'll be surprised with this. Now, a lot of you guys are pointing out the cable. Uh, the cable gauge needs to be a certain rating or it tends to overheat. That is a true thing. Now, one thing that I like about the Sunjo much better than I like the Greenworks is it tells you the settings that you're at and the depth. I'm assuming this is plus 10 millimeters, plus five, zero, negative five, and negative 10. Now, for our seed to soil contact for our Kentucky Blue, uh, the negative five should suffice. All right, so I consulted the Google. Uh, five millimeters deep is about 0.2 of an inch, and we want a 0.25, so we're pretty close. I'm hoping that's gonna be our money maker, because I'm just afraid if we were seeding with fescue, and you'll notice the fescue seeds are a lot longer, 
Um, the, the negative 10 millimeters puts us at uh, 0.4 would be great. Or if you're ripping up thatch, it's also great. But let's test this out. Well, we definitely kicked up a lot of debris. So I know it's working. Let's look in here. Oh yeah, that's perfect. We've got a nice little rut. That's about where I want it. Um, it's a little bit thicker, like the blades are a little bit thicker than I'd like to see. Um, but this is gonna work out really, really well for an overseed. Okay, so since I'm doing an overseed, I'm gonna go over this twice. We're gonna do one pass this way and one pass this way. Now, there's a couple of things that I'm noticing is this is the pattern that we want. Um, you want to see these tracks kind of running through and that's what's digging the ruts, right? What I'm noticing is since the lawn is a little lumpy, we're not getting those tracks all the way through. Um, like for instance, in this section right here, you can see how it's smooth. It doesn't have that bear claw kind of look to it that it does here. Now I don't fault the machine for that. Um, that's just an issue with the soil. Our only option is to go deeper but it's gonna ruin our consistency, so I don't wanna do that either. So shockingly enough, we're still pulling out a bunch of thatch. Uh, a lot of this is thatch because it's that um, debris that's below the soil and subsurface that is just kind of curling upward that is mostly like root ball, a lot of nutrients, but I mean, you can see how much I pulled out again. I mean, it's, it's a lot. Just to give you an idea of how much this really is let's just kind of get my hand in here and kind of pull it i mean and all this most of it's brown some of it we're we're clipping the grass blades but most of it's just dead debris that's just sitting there Woo. man it's a good day so our next step is uh, actually just put the seed down, but I want to check soil temperatures to see where they're at, see if we need to take another step. We need to see what the temperature is. So trusty meat thermometer, you can pick these up at Bed Bath & Beyond. I recently found them at the Walmart as well. And let's see where we're at ground temperature wise. Ooh, we're pretty high. Let's see. 62 degrees. 62 degrees is kind of our danger zone because our ground temperatures have been hovering around 48 to 52. Um, today is exceptionally warm considering what we've had and you can see the snow on the mountains. Um, so I'm a little concerned about crabgrass. So I think we're just gonna go ahead and do tenacity today. Um, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to get multiple applications. So we're really gonna be using the tenacity as a pre-emergent and not a post-emergent. Let's get it down. Now for this project, I chose the Baron Brug Turf Blue Pro. Now a couple of reasons why, it's got about four different varieties of bluegrass in here, but it's actually rated for turf activities. So with this lawn, where we've had some struggles with it, we want something that's a little bit more disease resistant and this is gonna do it. Plus it's got one incredible color to it. Now, according to the Baron Brug labels, they recommend three to five pounds per thousand square feet on an overseed. Um, the property that I'm dealing with front yard is about 15 to 1800 square feet. So I think that 10 pound bag will just about do it. I'm probably gonna go somewhere between seven and eight pounds on the front yard. We wanna go a little bit heavier to fill in some of these gaps. Uh, watering is gonna be really important on this. We're gonna water every day, about three to four times a day. General thumb, we want to keep it wet for about five weeks. So usually don't like to do daily watering, but in this instance, this is all we got. We need some good seed germination. Now during that time, we're not going to use any herbicide after we put the seed down. I don't have my spiker spreader on me. I've totally forgot it. So we're going to use this amazing red devil here. Uh, it's about the size of a child's play toy, um, but it'll fit our seed in there. 
Um, again, we want about three to five pounds per thousand square feet. Uh, can anybody at home explain to me how this thing works where you pull it and this whole thing comes off? Because apparently I've got the mind of a rhinoceros because I can't remember for the life of me. I, I know it comes off, but holy crap. So I found the spare saw to open the bag. Let's see if I can cut my hand off. Oh yeah. When in doubt, use a saw. Everything always starts with calibration, so I want to make sure that I get this to about 16 ounces per 18 seconds. And I am right about there. Hallelujah. All right, so for those of you guys new to my channel, I'm going to be using Tenacity on the Overseer. We're using Kentucky Bluegrass. Now, Tenacity acts as a post-emerging herbicide, but it doesn't affect your Kentucky bluegrass, your turf type tall fescue, and species of rye, um, which is awesome. So this is a really beneficial tool to make sure uh, that we don't have crabgrass growing through everything while we're doing our overseed process. One thing that you guys have to understand, it does require a surfactant and it needs to be a non-ionic surfactant. So I've got this uh, spreader sticker non-ionic surfactant by High Yield. Um, I'll put a link in the description. Soap is not a non-ionic surfactant. So I wanted to show you the pass along the edges. I do what's called a, a wet edge with a feather. So I'm gonna flick it and go in. So this from here to here is twice as wet from here to here. So the tenacity's down, the seed's down. I've only got one other concern and, and the concern's kind of a major concern. This soil just, it just looks like dried dirt. It, there just doesn't seem to be anything earthy to it. So I got an idea, let me show you. What better way to supplement the soil than a little bit of peat moss? So I calculated out to, uh, we want about a quarter of an inch so we don't choke the seed out, but this is going to have a lot of earthy micronutrients in it. I just picked it up at the local Home Depot, um, and these bags actually pack a punch. Um, I'm not necessarily married to this brand. I just wanted something that wasn't too chunky. Um, and this is also going to hold the water in and hopefully cover the seeds just enough where the birds don't eat it, but let's throw it down. Time, time. Yeah, we're gonna run the sprinklers for about 10 minutes now, just pushing that tenacity down. It has to be pushed down with 0.15 inches of water. And so we've done that. Now we're gonna get some good post-emergent control. Now I'm gonna get that peat moss down. And so I got my spiker spreader back. What I'm hoping for is that the chute at the bottom will open up wide enough so that the actual uh, peat moss will pass through. But let's, let's go see. I wanna shoot for about a quarter of an inch of peat moss over the entire surface. Ugh. Well, I thought we were gonna do it the easy way, but I'm just gonna have to put it down by hand because this is not working out. The good news is I got the hopper so I won't have to bend over too much, but I'm just gonna have to spread it. Just gotta get it down.
Okay, so I just want to finish this project. I don't have the right tools for the job, so I'm kind of improvising. So I've tried a couple different techniques and I think I found something that works. It's fairly fast, uh, pretty simple, and it seems to be going down evenly. Let me show you. So I'm just pulling the hopper towards me and the name of the game is just consistency because we want to consistently put the dirt down at a quarter of an inch. So I'm grabbing two handfuls and I'm just kind of spreading it so I can see it go over evenly. Um, this is really nice peat moss. And then, as you can see, I'm doing two handfuls for every, for every about three feet wide and two feet deep. Now I'm gonna take my hands and just kind of massage it through. Just one pass. Massage it through so it's even. Now my only issue with this is it's not quite getting all the clumps. So then, I'm grabbing a, just a regular broom. And I'm gonna go over it. A couple different ways. Now, the whole point to this is to get the dirt to the ground, but also to make sure that the grass blades aren't laying down. If they lay down, the grass is gonna die. But this is the most effective way that I can do it without having like a level on uh, tool that's really gonna have enough weight to do it. And this is just to protect the seed, to keep it wet, but also to protect it from the birds if we can. All right guys, we've reached the end of the day. The project is done. And as you can see, we've got decent color. I uh, can't complain. I think things went really, really well. Pretty smooth. We got that peat moss on there and things are gonna even out. Holy cow, it's been a long day. Now, the uh, sun joke performed really well. Uh, There's a few times I put my hand on top of the sun joke to see if we had some overheat issues. I know a few of you guys out there were wondering about that. So far, so good. No overheating issues. Now, the other thing about it that a few of you guys had asked me to is to check the actual tines. Um, and sorry, these aren't tines. This is just the scarifier and let's see how it looks. Now, so far so good. I, you can tell that they've been worked in a little bit. Some of the paint is missing off of the tips, but nothing that is detrimental. Nothing looks bent. Things look like the way that they're supposed to. Now, very similar to the Greenworks, the Sun Joe's scarifier, it did its job. I mean, these things, they weigh like 14 pounds and I'm so used to having heavy weight. I think they, uh, the slit slice seeder that I used, it weighed almost 250 pounds and it, it ran like a dinosaur. Like it was three miles an hour, it was very difficult to use. At the end of the day, the slit slice seeder had a better cut um, because of the weight. But with that said, I didn't like the slit slice seeder. It took way too long and really I didn't think it performed and to have something that basically tills the ground and then we can drop the seed into it, I'm happy with that. Seed soil contact. So to spend 125 bucks to get the Sun Joe with the Scarifier and you get the extra um, dethatcher with it, it's a good deal. Like I, I can't complain about it. Is it commercial quality? Nah, it's not commercial quality but it is what it is. It'll get the job done. You can get a couple of uses out of it. And the cool thing is that actually digs through thatch where a traditional power rake is just bringing up more debris than it is thatch where the scarifier will actually get through that. So I see myself having multiple uses with it. Woo! So we got that job done. Everything's good. Dirt's down, seeds down, tenacity got down. It was like a whole whirlwind of things going on. But Assuming these guys water properly, we're gonna water 
daily for almost five weeks to get that Kentucky Blue going. Now, if we can get it going, it's going to thicken up and it's going to look real, real nice. So we'll continually do these updates. But guys, you could already see this is the second service that I've done here. And it looks a billion times better, even in person. Like you can just tell a dramatic different grass is standing up. Everything's good. Well, guys, another one in the books. There's a couple of lessons I learned. Man, get the right tools for the right job. That cost me a lot of time, but I kind of felt like a lot of you guys at home be in the same situation. So I didn't mind doing it the old school way. Now, the other lesson I learned is you can be a ginger and a redneck. <laughs> but guys, hit me up in the comments. Love to hear from you guys. If you guys have any questions or concerns, Pest and Lawn Ginger, we're out.